Hello everybody, it's SOD Medhaven here today, and due to a power outage, I was um, 30 minutes into my last video, and the file is corrupted, so that was fun. And then as soon as everything came back on, internet was out, yada yada, you guys get the gist of it, it's always fun, but I'm sad that I put in all the time into the first one, and yeah, it, it is what it is, but the second one's going to turn out a lot better. So today I want to talk about the EBR-105, the Manticore. We're not going to be going in detail about these two tanks, but we are going to be talking about, you know, light tank gameplay in general. I had a 14-hour stream um, on the 30th, uh, from the 29th going into the 30th. I streamed all night, and I was doing a lot of light tanking. Uh, during the course of that, I did one mark my EBR-105, a tank that's actually not that good, but actually pretty good inside of World of Tanks console. On PC, these tanks are actually extremely good. Um, we're also going to be talking about an underrated skill called Last Stand, and this skill is one that you probably don't hear a whole lot about. 25% increase to crew performance when under 10% health, so HP. If you got a um, 100, and, let's say you have 1,300 hit points, you have to be at 130 or less for this effect to kick in. Then again, it's a small, like 25%, that's drastic. To give you an idea, it takes my reload from my E75TS from 9.7 all the way down to 8.3, and then view range, everything across the board gets amplified. So I do have a little bit of um, gameplay to show off of this effect jumping in for light tanks. I actually find that Last Stand is amazing on light tanks. Um, concealed mediums, and a couple of others. So let's go ahead, jump into this replay, and show it off. So this is going to be over an Overlord. Uh, I don't want to go through this entire replay, because this is kind of just example material more than it is uh, something to actually show off entirely. So we're going to go ahead, jump up. Right off the bat, you can see 1,000 hit points, the very first engagement. We're going to be going against a T92, and I'm going to get hit hard. Um, my goal during this live stream was actually intentionally lose health to test out the straight and see how it performs as you can see right here going straight for the ram like i knew that the ram was going to happen i knew that i was i might have i might be able to out trade him i might not it was kind of a risk but there we go 29 hit points now i'm going to step this replay back right before he hits take a look at the mini map at the bottom right of the screen and then we're going to hit play once I get shot again, watch what happens to the, the mini-map, and watch what happens to the view range indicator on the map. As I turn it off rather than hit play, because I'm a Muppet. Okay. Am I still a Muppet? Anyways, mini-map. We're going to take one more hit, and immediately, right there, you see that massive jump in view range. That's because the crew skill kicked in. So, for instance, the the Falcon T92 has a base view range of 400. With optics equipped, you're looking at uh, 468 meters with ventilation and a premium consumable stack on top of that as well. Then, once you um, add in your crew, which has, um, let's say, Born Leader, Six Sense, uh, sit Situational Awareness... Um, you're looking at 523 meters of effective view range. And a little bit of math on this, which this was the math that was done for the EBR. Uh, the EBR is at, let's say, 471... Hold on. 400 and, it's 461 base view range on the EBR-105. Now, the EBR-105, This is there's two numbers that are possibly capable of this to be achieved. It's either 476.25 or 587.775. And those numbers are specifically for your possible combination with Born Leader, because I don't know if Born Leader amplifies the effect itself or not. And... While we were doing this testing, we even did the testing with the T100LT and a little bit of a comp scenario where we were capable of spotting heavy tanks out at exactly 441 meters on the map, making it to where even if they were behind a bush, you were still capable of outspotting them. Now, to give an idea on this, let's say that the Falcon T92, you drop below 10% health, um, what the number is going to be from 523. 
And the numbers, they're going to total out once Last Stand kicks in to 653.75. The second number being 666.75 if Born Leader affects it or not. Um, I haven't done any of the testing for seeing if uh, Born Leader affects Last Stand or not. But it's a. I do believe that Last Stand is a perk, not a skill. So the first number at 653 is the one that sounds like it's going to be more accurate than the second one of Born Leader actually affecting it. All right, so back to the replay right here. We're going to be jumping the hill, and as you can see, at on the map, we spotted out the artillery all the way in the back corner of the map. And what's really cool about this spot out is take a look at how much foliage is in the way. So this is 653 meters of effective view range. That is behind multiple trees and possibly even some bushes that we were capable of spotting out the artillery. Uh, right here, you're going to see the ribbon pop up, enemy spotted, which means that, yes, I was the one that detected it. As we continue on, I do believe that we spot out one more enemy inside this area. As I'm going to fast forward in the replay here, just make it fast. There's really no point. So we did four spots the entire game. This was kind of a lackluster match. Nothing really to show off except for 4,000 combined, and I'm working on my third mark on my uh, T92. Um, so far, I'm up to, I believe it's 93%. Now, back to this, Last Stand is completely underrated, and I just, as I've been testing out the skill on a lot of my crews, I have found out that I've been shot by Tyrans, and I've been able to spot out the Tyrans at the back of the map without any issue at all. It's immediate detection. So, inside both of these replays, I actually don't remember if last stand ever engaged so let's go over them i'm going to be showing you a little bit of uh, how i play on pearl river inside my light tanks and the areas that i like to go to for my spot assist and helping out the team all right for the first coverage we're going to be going over the ebr and the match that i had inside this tank uh just because ebrs they're kind of frowned upon for having really bad view range and sure they got bad view range but they do sport really good mobility, and really good concealment. It is kind of hard to deny these tanks because of that. So the position that I like to take in this map, it is kind of risky uh, depending on how fast you are and how good your concealment is. You can technically do this inside of a medium tank that has got decent enough concealment, but the bush that I'm going to be parking inside of, you're going to notice your medium tank is never going to fit inside this bush and you're never going to be able to utilize it unless you're inside of a light tank. And wild tanks are very hard to drive. They are not fun. A little bit worried. Now, for light tank gameplay, there is one thing that I do want to shout out a little bit before we continue on with this replay. And that is talking about your concealment and how all this works and the best way to play your lights, mediums, or even your heavies to give you an idea on how things in the game works. So maximum spotting distance is 445. That is the farthest that you were allowed to spot targets in game. And then anything beyond that, you cannot detect. But let's say that your view range is 600. And let's say an enemy tank has a concealment factor of 264 meters. So you take that 445, you take that 264, you basically take the 445, subtract that, and that is the distance that the target needs to be before you are allowed to spot them with 444 base view range. But the second that you're at 600, you're now counteracting all of that concealment that the enemy has, which means that you're probably spotting a Borask at 340 meters or maybe even 380 meters depending on your view range and what's going on, uh, so on and so forth. So up next, let's talk about the mini-map. So from here, you see the dotted line around my tank. It, you hit this that white dotted line going all around. If you guys don't know what that is, that is actually your effective concealment that is how that's kind of like your safety net safety proximity uh stating of your concealment barrier okay that's that's your shield essentially until they shoot your wills and your crew inside your tank is sitting there and they're <laughs> all right the wheels back up time to go with the clown car um but with your safety net around your tank let's say an enemy is in h 
uh, one, two, three, four, five. Let's say they're in H5 and you get detected. The reason why that is because they have really good view range. And tanks that are going to be able to detect you from that range are probably tanks that have 400 base view range. They're running situational awareness. They're running optics. They're going to probably catch you out. And th that's that. Something simple to go over. Just a little bit of mechanics for how view range essentially works. Um, other than that, let's go ahead and jump back into the replay and fast forward to where I paused it because I forgot where I was. All right, my funny driving. I tried to get a pinpoint, but we're really close. 4,005 off in the distance here. Here we are zooming in. Now, I'm, I came into the spot backwards because if I need to run, um, I'm going to have full speed getting away. And here we are. Little bush right here. Avoid hitting the tree because you don't want to knock it over. You don't want them to know that you are there. Simple gameplay. Light tank gameplay. Passive scouting is something that doesn't really take a whole lot except for a little bit of map knowledge and positioning around the map and where you want to sit at to provide the best view range you are basically just a tower you're playing tower defense by this point and you stop and you sit there and you don't move and that's kind of what it turns into but you're providing view range what's nice about this position in h3 is you can spot everything coming from f1 as they're coming up that hill, you're preventing them from being able to push up over into the top section of uh, G12 all the way down to K2 and K1. You're preventing the fight from ever progressing up the top of the hill because your team is capable of doing a firing line. And if you take a look at the map, you're going to notice the entire team stopped because they're firing down there, preventing the push on that flank. You, you know, some people may stop and say passive scouting. There's no benefit to it. It's dead. Thing is, passive scouting can prevent combat. It can prevent pushing. It can prevent rushes. It can stop a lot of things in-game from happening because knowledge is power. And the more you know, the stronger you're going to be by the end of the match because you have all the information early game. You know exactly what's going on. And also, if you're capable of taking out an autoloader, take out an autoloader because that's a clip that you don't want to deal with. So I will I will definitely blast the crap out of bat chats if I see them. Now, even in tier 8, um, playing the uh, the EBR 75 Mile 1954, whenever that first came out, it was really bad. It was essentially in drive mode the entire time, making it to where you only had 15 degrees of turning. Now, Wild Lights, they're fast, they're nimble, you know, you're not really trying to go after passive scouting, but they are capable of passive scouting if you can get the positioning correct. Uh, Westfield K0. Um, there's a couple of spots in Westfield that I'm going to need to get a couple of replays on to be able to show off. But for starters, we're going to be going over Pearl River. So with the Southern Spawn, that's one of the first places that I like to go to. I'll stop there and I'll see what's going on. And then depending on how the map and how everything is progressing will determine how I relocate. Uh, the second position is once everyone's pushed up, we now need new eyes on the field to cover the right side because the right side is now fully opened. Sitting here, providing view range just in the open field by itself, this is all I really need to do. So far up to 6,600 assist, 330 damage, 7,154 assist, just barely had another shot in the 60 TP from I don't even know what shot him because it's not my job to know what shot him. My job is to provide eyes and look at my teammates to get too close thinking to myself that's my assist because this is what I want to show off. Now a lot of people in game a lot of people like to rush but if you see an effective light tank player reward his push if he is pushing in to spot out targets you want to keep your distance behind him let's say 150 meters to 200 meters behind him allow your light tanks to be able to be the ones that pull up to spot the targets let them get the assist off it because that is their reward for having such a high risk high reward play style even passive scouting it's high risk high reward because sometimes you're going to have positions that you want to get into as fast as you can and those positions there is no follow-up to lead into that position that's going to make it easy to get there. 
Uh, for instance, Melanovka is a great example for how many bushes you have prior. It's actually nice to stop off in a bush right next to the field to spot out the enemy light tank and kind of hope that your team takes him down instead of risking yourself driving halfway out. Sometimes it's nice to bring yourself up to be the bait driving halfway down. That way that light tank kind of feels like they have the incentive to stay on the field to um, try and kill you because you're you're the contender. You're trying to get assist just as he's trying to get assist. And it's all about who kills who first, who's going to dominate the match after whoever dies. So it's always nice to play safe and take it slow unless you're comfortable with your gun and you know how to aim and everything else. Now for EBRs, I'm going to say this. You don't need vertical stabilizers. You don't need accuracy perks on these tanks. I actually kind of find it completely useless to run any of them on my EBR just because the gun handling of this tank is already almost pinpoint whenever it comes down to mid-range combat, which is where you're normally engaging inside of your EBRs. So, Pearl River, this is, I do believe, did I have the mark on? Yes, this is like the third match I had my mark on. And this was actually a really nice match to show off. Um, the second one is going to be inside of the Manticore. Now, for the second replay, uh, to give you a little bit of an idea on this one, this is actually how to counter spot the first replays inside the EBR 105's position. If you can get down here, you can counter spot it without much of a problem. Um, no, Southern Spawn you know, like the, the H3 location, you have to go to H3 because if you try to pull off the lower spotting down here where I am, where I'm going, it will not work from the southern spawn. This only works in the northern spawn because from playing the Manticore, this is the northern spawn location that you want to get to. You're going to get here a lot faster than the H3 position, even if it's an EBR that you're going against. This is where you want to sit because you're capable of scouting out going across into J4 and K4. Anything that is trying to cross this location is going to get detected and lit up. Even if they're pulling into the bushes up top, um, this is the first location. This is the safe, safe location. The second location you're going to be seeing me pull up into here in a moment because their light tank is already up in H1, which means that I now want to move in and I want to prevent him from getting any assist. I want to prevent his team from being able to pull over and fire on my team by seeing them before anyone else has seen. Any of these bushes right here you can pull into, but you want to pull into the farthest one here on the left, right at the very back. You're going to be able to see through this bush, no problems, no holds bar. You're going to be able to catch people crossing on the left side as well if they're still inside the back of the map and they were AFK probably. And then anything that tries to cross, it's going to get detected. But if you spawn on the southern part of the map and you try to come down in this low area, you're not going to be able to spot out the enemies in F1 because there's a little bit of a mountain in the way. You have to go to H3 to be able to scout out that crossway. And here you can already tell that since their vigilance is dead, there's probably a couple of tanks that are still inside that area, but they fell back because they watched their vigilance get absolutely destroyed. So this kind of gameplay, it's either that or the, the teams are already spread like this to begin with, and it was a really hard, heavy rush over on the opposite side of the map, which happens quite a bit on Pearl River. If it's a heavy focused one, yes, that happens. If it's kind of lighter armor, they usually like to go left. It just depends on how many heavy tanks are on the team. You know, like most of the heavies, you're not going to see heavies pulling up on the far left side compared to what you see in the middle and the far right. They like to use gun depression and heavy armor, so that's how it goes. So, in the course of the matches I played on stream, these were the two that I felt like would be good examples of just Pearl River spotting, counter spotting, and positions that I like to go to. So far, I only have 724 assists, and now I'm going to start shooting because it's all I can do to really do anything because the right side, nothing happened. And this occurs quite a bit. You know, then you have your fallback locations, the second areas. You see that your team got pushed so hard in a single location that they fell apart. But you still have a couple of guys that are active that were snipers originally over on the right side. So 
what do you want to do? You still want to provide view range for your team, even if that requires you to completely relocate around the map. Um, this is a decent location to come to, um, but actually in the field on C4, there's another spot that you can go to for passive scouting, and you're going to be sitting there, but if your team falls apart, you have no way of falling back because you're in the open. So here in B4 on Pearl River, this is actually a better spot to come to because you have a couple of bushes. Um, they might get blind shot, and if you feel like you might get blind shot because you're vers versing a good team, then you might want to take up a couple of the passive spotting locations because you'll be able to catch people out coming from B7 a little bit easier with the passive spotting location because you can see down it. But this is kind of like the safe area of Pearl River for scouting. And currently, I am the only one providing view range now in this area because the team fell apart. It's 9 to 6. This is kind of an overwhelming majority. But even if you're, let's say, 7 to 10, you're in a losing scenario. If you're capable of providing view range for your team, you're probably going to end up winning. And for me, if there's a shot that I can take to kill an enemy inside scenarios like this, you are correct. I am going to take those shots to try and drop tanks if I can pin I'm not gonna risk non penetrating shots you know and then in moments like this you know it's it's pretty much game over it's nine to three and I'm kind of like I'm just gonna push in because he's a one shot I'm full health I've fired four rounds this entire match and spotted target hit just probably gonna see if I can spot respot unfortunately um the medium came in too close but then again this is just clean up duty now at the very end of the match super conk i kind of don't care he can shoot me because you know it's end of the game and good day to you light tank which was the separate manticore popping my premium consumable not gonna need it so the idea to this is light tanks concealment plays and just getting an idea of what light tank players have to do um enemy manticore i actually never even looked at the scoreboard so i'm going to pause it only had 210 assist because we stopped the medium from ever pushing up and since the vigilance was there and he was willing to try and do a cross in tier 10s that means that there were probably a couple other tanks over there as well um, because after the Vigilance died, you saw the Valor fall back. I do believe the Valor was the one that pulled around and left the area. Because that's all he could do. So, I want to go over my Wield Lights, because not a lot of people go over Wield Lights and how they have them put together. Um, there's one thing that you will probably notice on both of my EBRs, basically all of my EBRs. I actually run Toolbox Repairs. Because you have Wheels... And you can't use track mechanic because they had to make an entirely new perk to put on your wheeled vehicles, which is wheel mechanic. Um, going over to skills, I run camouflage expertise, situational awareness, wheel mechanic, born leader, clutch braking, general mechanic to get 25%. Unfortunately, that's the only way to get 25% because track mechanic is 25%. So I have to combine two perks... Which is okay, because I don't mind sacrificing accuracy on these tanks, because they already have really good gun handling to begin with. Uh, six cents, steady aim, to increase the overall accuracy, and then last stand. 25% uh, increase to crew performance when under 10%. I do believe it's a perk, though, because born leader is uh, an increase to skill, effectiveness, and crew performance. So, I do believe that's a perk, not a skill. So, yeah, there's that. A little bit of a brain fart. But with having um, Toolbox on my EBRs, it makes it to where whenever my wheels get shot out, that I want to say it's five seconds or four seconds to completely blow the tire back up and have it back up and running again. Or even if you get launched out, like that four second difference or that three second difference or yeah, probably a four second difference because if you just take... Um, a premium consumable, premium repair kit, premium repair kits, I do believe, provide a 15% bonus. Yeah, 15% repair time bonus. And then you get another 25 from the perk. 
from both perks lined up and then get another 25 so you're at 65 percent repair speed usually takes 10 seconds to fully repair so 3.5 seconds to fully blow up a tire and get back on the move that is drastic because you're not penalized you know your speed is no longer gone you still have your speed capable of moving my manticore on the other hand just ventilation teamed up with it and the crew that i was running on this which is currently in the t92 falcon um i had to redo this one twice because i was going at it and this is also my passive scouting build so born leader last stand camouflage expertise off-road driving because it's track based uh supply conversion probably something you don't see often the more that you're capable of getting your premium consumable off if you're using it whenever you're scouting that's an additional 15 percent stacked on top of your view range so i mean every single 50 seconds is a lot better than every single 60 seconds and rather than only being able to use it 15 times in the match you're capable of popping it five times in four minutes around there if you're constantly popping it off so it's a little bit of an advantage it's not super crazy but it makes it where if you relocate and you have to go on a different approach that the other light tank probably already used his and he still has eight seconds left in his recharge time and yours is already active which means that you can progress to the next location while having the view range advantage against him uh, situational awareness track mechanic six cents and marked target marked target because you want to pull over, scout out the targets, back off. 13 seconds later, you get to pull back over, repeat the process. Um, I would take Mark Target on my Wild Crew, but it's kind of hard to trade off because you have to sacrifice a perk for General Mechanic. But if I was going to sacrifice a perk on this, I actually would drop Steady Aim and trade that out for Mark Target. That way you don't have to pop out as much because of your wills and you're not going to be worried about it. But then again, you end up on a city map and your first reply to yourself is I'm a little bit miserable because I can't do anything on this map and it's a little bit of a struggle. Anyways, you guys, I hope this helps you with some of your light tank gameplay and hopefully the little things I showed you on Pearl River. Um, please know that I didn't want to show off my Pearl River spotting spots because the one that I did inside my EBR is actually one that I am almost one of the only people that do it. And for me, it has worked almost 80% of the time. It's a very aggressive position to get into, but 80% of the time is actually really nice. I, I, I would actually say a little bit more of 90% of the time that position works because enemy light tanks like to drive up high or down low and you get spotted. That's fine. You can back off and repeat the process until you get it. Anyways, guys, I hope you enjoyed this. Leave a like, comment, subscribe. Um, seriously, leave a comment down in the comment section of what your guys' opinion is on this, or if there's anything that you would like to add, or if I finally managed to convince some people um, about using Last Stand. Uh, I do use it on my Type 5. I use it on my mouse. I use it on a couple of super heavies that take a beating, that have longer reloads. And whenever you get below that 10% threshold, it is just that little bit of an advantage that rather than re reloading in 15 seconds, suddenly your shell's in every single 12.8 seconds, and the enemy is now confused on why it is that your tank is turning quicker in this close quarters encounter. And suddenly they used to be able to circle you and no longer can. Anyways, till next time, catch you in the next video.